I got the thumbs up. That means it's time to go, folks. Uh, we're going to turn it over to Alan as he's going to lead us in on this, uh, this Easter prelude today. Alan, take it away. Thanks, Alan. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this lovely October morning. We're uh, grateful to have you with us, especially those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those watching from home or listening from home. Uh, we are here at Faith Lutheran in Forest Lake, Minnesota, and thank our women of faith for sponsoring today's radio broadcast so that we're all able to participate and worship together. Uh, one of the most exciting things that a congregation can do is celebrate that one of our own that we've kind of cultivated since birth, has been able to move along and become an ordained pastor. Uh, and that is what we get to celebrate today. So congratulations to Amy Mihalich smith Let's give her a round of applause. Uh, I know a bunch of you watched that service yesterday from St. Andrews. And so really, just a powerful opportunity to walk with her and to witness to her uh, taking this step and becoming an ordained pastor. She is actually in her first call at St. Andrews where she served as an intern and steps immediately into this role as a teaching pastor uh, where she will be, uh, she will flourish and thrive. She is such a great uh, pastor and we're so happy for her. So uh, congratulations to Amy. Uh, the last announcement is actually related to what I'm going to invite the kids to come forward and do. And so kids, I'd love for you to come forward at this time as we are going to talk about what's on these little handprints. So kids, come on up. Now, these, these handprints probably look familiar. We've done this for a few years now. Does anybody remember what these handprints are all about? Did any of you guys decorate these hands during Sunday school? Did any of you color your handprints? Okay, anybody, anybody? All right. Do you remember why we did these? What are we, what are we trying to remember with these handprints? You guys remember? There's a little note on there. Do you guys remember these? Yeah, remember what's on this note? What's this a reminder of? Anybody out there? School snacks, all right? So we want everyone out there to remember that what we are doing for the next month is bringing in school snacks, at least the next two weeks, okay? So on October 10th and 17th, and it's actually written on this handprint, uh, we're going to be collecting snacks that we can give to the schools because there's some of our friends who are in the schools who sometimes they just need, they need a little extra boost. They need a little extra energy, a little bit of a snack uh, to be able to help them keep going through the day. And this is one of our ways as a church to be able to help them and help out the schools quite a bit. So there's some great examples on things that you could bring in like granola bars, crackers, cereal bars, pudding cups, fruit cups, pretzels, and cheese crackers. Any of those things, we encourage Anybody in the congregation, you guys, maybe if you're going shopping with your mom or dad this week, 
remind them, hey, let's throw a few extra little snacks into our cart and then we can bring it in to church in the next couple of weeks and help out our friends. Good idea? Now here's the thing. Can you guys all stand up? Usually, we have you take one of these and put it on your hand and then go give a bunch of high fives. And it's awesome, but it's COVID. So we're not going to do that physically today. Uh, but Nina, can you demonstrate what this would look like? So like, I would have this, and then you would come over, and we would transfer the hand, and then she would then accumulate said hand. We're not going to do that. However, we do need all of you to put a hand up in the air, okay? We're going to virtually high-five you. This is like, you even get it too at home, okay? So you guys ready? Get your hand up. Can you guys get your hand up and just pretend you've got one of these hand prints, and then these are at the doors. So as you leave today, grab one of them. If they're all gone by the time worship's over, just remember it, and we'll tell you about it in the weekly email, okay? But can we do a a virtual high-five? The count of three. Are we going to do any tricks, or are we just going to just do it? We don't want to, like, do, like, high-low or anything like that. Just a regular hand. Okay. They're just, like, just do the hand, the high five. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Clap. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. We can now all do this together. God's work, our hands, collectively, we are going to help feed our friends. Can we do that? All right. Guys, you can uh, fold your hands now and pray with me before we head out and see Kathy and Amy. All right. Loving God, help us to serve our neighbors and listen to their needs as we care for your world. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for all of your help today. And you can head out that door, follow Kathy, and all of our friends out here will remember your great reminder for us today. As they're walking out, the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you in this time to share that peace however you're comfortable sharing that peace with those around you. If you can give high fives, if you don't want to touch, you can nod and say, peace be with you. Whatever you'd like to do, wave. You can stand up and move around because we're going to start our worship standing as we sing our opening hymn after we've done a few high fives. Peace be with all of you. Good morning. We are going to share in um, singing the word through singing one of, again, we're keeping the role of Pastor John's favorite hymns, Thine is the Glory. Please join. Is it
gather in worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. Let us pray together. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we have our weekly prayer lab minute. Anger. There's a lot of anger out there right now. With the difficulties and uncertainties of pandemic, I think we are all experiencing anger much closer to the surface. I'd like to encourage us to consider how we pray our way through anger. First, when an angry reaction or emotions rise up, it can be difficult to get past the intensity that we are experiencing. If this is true for you, I recommend that you do something with your anger. Maybe get outside and take a walk. Or go split wood. Spend some time with a punching bag. Then, once you've released some of the intense emotion, open up your heart to God with this question. What is my anger really about? Why is this touching such a nerve for me? Allow yourself both the time and the space to listen, and to be in God's loving presence with these questions. It's likely that you'll discover your anger really is stemming from a deep hurt, fear or grief that is simmering below the surface. Once you have allowed God's insight into your anger, allow yourself to be vulnerable in asking for help, healing, comfort, or forgiveness. May you find God's incredible loving presence with you in your anger. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever man may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always there. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives. 
is today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. If you ask me how A gospel reading from the 24th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Please join in singing our um, response to the gospel. Christ the Lord is risen today. Stanzas one and four. May be seated. Grace and peace to you, my friends in Christ. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. You are not quite ready for this. It's October. What are we doing? We're doing Easter in October. Even the Easter lilies outside in our prayer garden knew that we were celebrating Easter this week, but we are thrown off. I mean, we celebrated Christmas in August and Easter in October. What are we doing here? Maybe it feels a little weird to hear the Easter story today, but today, because it's not Easter, because all the fanfare is a little different, we can actually peer into this text with a new lens. Perhaps we can look at this and focus on some of the unusual things in this story. Not the usual holiday festivities and thinking about the meal that we have and all of the the things that are going to be happening as we celebrate Easter, but instead we can gaze upon the parts of this story that might often get overlooked. And surprisingly, I'm here to argue that sometimes we miss some of the most mundane and routine parts of this story. And yes, the routine. And it even starts with the women who arrive at the tomb bright and early on Sunday morning. You might be asking yourselves, why? Why why Sunday morning? Why wait until the first day of the week? And yes, Sunday was the first day of the week, not Monday. And so for this Jewish community, Sunday would have been that very first day in uh, first century Jerusalem where they would have come to the tomb. Why didn't they come the day before? when that body might have started to smell and that some of that stuff was starting to sink in well believe it or not there's some clues in the text as you can as you can guess there might be a few uh, clues that we have and if you go back the previous chapter at the end of chapter 23 as Jesus has died and his body has been removed we get this little clue Uh, so this is chapter 23 the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid then they returned and prepared spices and some ointments. And on the Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment. Even if they wanted to prepare the body on that Saturday, they couldn't. This was part of their tradition. On the Sabbath, not even preparing a body that had just died, they couldn't go to this tomb. Sunday morning was literally the earliest that they could go and prepare the body. They can't work. They can't tend to the body of Jesus for this full day. Well, I guess there's a few other small details that we should probably look at, too. Now, first of all, there's some things going on in this story that we might miss the first time around. And and I think it's because we often only read chapter 24 on Easter morning, not 
chapter 23. But if you look, there's a few things that get pointed out, especially if we want to debate whether or not the women knew this was the right place or if they were in the wrong area. Well, actually, no, we find that the women saw the tomb And so they went to the right place. They knew where the tomb was. They saw the tomb with their own eyes. And if you want to argue that maybe they didn't look in the right spot and maybe the tomb was really big and they weren't looking in the right spot, they saw where his body was laid. And let's also be bold enough to say that in the story that we just heard Marlene read, that the women weren't exactly treated the best by the disciples because we've got Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and these other women with them. And they went and they tell the the apostles what they had witnessed. But these words seemed to them, the apostles, an idle tale. And they didn't believe them, the women. An idle tale, really? What is this, fake news? Tabloid fodder? I think the men in this story are acting like this is straight from the National Enquirer. But can we blame them? People don't just rise from the dead, even though it makes for great plots and TV shows today. So Peter has to run and double check, just just in case. And as verse 12 tells us, he gets up, runs to the tomb, stoops and looks in, and sees the linen cloths by themselves. So what's next? Well, Peter, certainly witnessing this, goes back to the guys and tells them, Hey guys, we were wrong. The women were right. That's not how the story went. No, he went home. Amazed at what happened. But it's not like he tells us anything. Oh, oh, look, there, there is a footnote at the end here. Um, at Had happened. So maybe the footnote actually says something profound like some translations say that Peter went home and told his friends. You think that's what it is? You think that's what it is? Footnote. Other ancient authorities lack verse 12. What does that mean? I think it means this doesn't even exist. It's suggesting that this entire verse didn't even happen. Some editor later on decides Peter should be the hero in the story. Yikes. The story essentially ends with they didn't believe the women. Now, Luke, compared to Mark, pivots. You like that word, don't you? We've pivoted quite a bit. And in this story was one of those very first pivots. They pivot to these post-resurrection appearances. Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Jesus showing up and eating fish with the disciples to to prove that his body would be able to consume food and he wasn't just some ghost. And these appearances prove that the women were right all along. And is there a lesson here? Trust the women. (laughs) The first time. Listen. Believe them. Because the apostles don't. They don't believe. And because they don't believe, the story gets kind of anticlimactic. Women are the first ones to be the evangelists to tell the good news, and it's not even met with doubt. It's met without any reaction at all. The women are overlooked, and I hate to admit it, but it feels like this pattern kind of continued for a long time in the church. Did you know that the very first Lutheran pastor, Elizabeth Alvina Platts, was ordained in 1970? 1970? That was just over 50 years ago, so think about that. Our church didn't ordain women before that. Many Christian churches still don't. Wow, think about all of the really important voices of proclamation that we would be missing out on if it weren't for the ordination of women. I think about what a gift it is here at Faith Lutheran, how we continue to hear powerful women's voices proclaim the good news. Since I have been here at Faith, I've really been excited to see and have this privilege of hearing these female voices that we've been able to hear. Uh, We get to hear from Deacon Nina regularly every week, but also as she's able to preach. Uh, Here she is with Bishop Lull, how Bishop Patricia Lull has frequently preached here as well. I think about Pastor Courtney Young, Pastor Amy Orsted, Reverend Julie Wright, the Reverend Dr. Caroline Lewis. All of these women have filled this space with the good news. 
Deacon Amy Hartman, Monica Jones, Joy McElroy, they've all told us to cherish all children. Just last week, Casey Stanley showed up and told us how valuable a forever home is for every child seeking adoption. We've heard from names like Amelia Espinoza. I will never forget when Amelia Espinoza stood up here, right here, and she told us the story about a man standing on a beach that was littered with starfish, and she, pick, and, and she tells how the story, the guy picks up one and throws it back into the ocean, and someone says, well, why are you doing that? What difference is that going to make? And Amelia said, well, I bet it made a difference to that starfish. I think about Lacey Waddell, Macy Roberts, Madeline Broom. They've told us about their experiences, how you as a church have fostered that, that ministry in their lives to th have them tell us about it. How Vanessa Sosnowski shared with us about being confirmed in a pandemic when she wasn't helping us learn what the word on the street was. I think about the numerous other youth who have appeared in videos and led us in music. They've inspired us to be the church. And Faith, you walked alongside Marlene Elmstrom, who just so happened to read the gospel to us this morning as a recently retired pastor. And now you, Faith Lutheran, we get to walk along Pastor Amy Mihalich smith who has officially been a pastor for one day. What I'm getting at, folks, is that this congregation has a deep, deep, deep history of listening. You've listened to the good news, and you've believed. You've heard the cries for justice. You've heard the loud cries of proclamation, and you have responded. I remember the first time that I got to hear Amy preach. Notice she's wearing... Uh, some clothes that she got while she was in Africa, when she had lived in Rwanda. She told us about the accompaniment model, how walking side by side with the friends that she had met in Rwanda had broken down those barriers, and she was able to learn from her friends just as she was able to teach her friends. It was a life-changing experience knowing that together we can walk further. She wanted you to know something. She wanted you to know that you don't have to travel halfway across the world to make a difference and to love your neighbor. But Amy's story is kind of like Peter. She denied having any calling into ministry at the time. I, I just remember after she preached, everyone's like, well, Amy, are you going to be a pastor? You going to go into ministry? And she's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I know that reaction. But the Holy Spirit had other plans, didn't it? Yesterday, our congregation had supporters attended uh, Amy's ordination in person, and many of you attended her service online. This is Amy sandwiched between our bishop, Patricia Lull, and then her supervising pastor, Sarah Breckenridge, the, the pastor who led the sermon and who preached at her ordination yesterday. And after I snapped this picture, another man came up, and he said, wow, you know, the future of the Lutheran church is female. I said, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, but it's also the present. And then I got to thinking, but it's also the past. I mean, the origin of that proclamation began on a Sunday morning when four, men, four women following Jewish death rituals showed up at a tomb to perform the routine, to perform the duty, to take care of a body. And what they witnessed was nothing emptiness and it came to symbolize fullness and new life for all of us who would have thought God has called Amy to share that good news to run and not be afraid to tell everyone what she has heard to witness the miraculous life-changing power of the good news of Jesus to a world that is hurt broken sometimes angry and lonely and you faith Lutheran have helped cultivate that calling in her heart. You, Faith Lutheran, have cultivated those seeds for the future. So I wonder how we will nurture and tend to those seeds as we go forward. How will we nurture and care for our young as we help them grow in faith? Well, believe it or not, I actually asked our youth all about it. I asked our youth, what matters to you? 
And I can't wait to tell you all about it. I can't wait to tell you what our youth had to say next week. Happy Easter, everybody. He is risen. He is risen. risen The tomb is empty, folks. The women told us. And there ain't nothing routine about that. Amen. We thank you for all of the ways that you are the church as we give our gifts and our offerings to the Lord. We thank you for those who are able to give online. If you'd like to drop your offering at the plates at the door as you leave, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, We also appreciate the ways that you're giving uh, through your prayer, through your service, through your love of one another. This is how it means to be the church. This is how we tend to each other. And sometimes it just feels routine, but it's the most important thing that we do. And we now turn it over to our choir because this is a one way as we give our, gifts, our gifts and our offerings that the choir can lead us as well. Now the frequent rising from the very grave We eat the gift of you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept these gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy God of resurrection, we come before you in prayer for the church, the world, and all of those in need. God of proclamation, thank you for the courage, truth-telling, and persistence of women in sharing the good news since the tomb was first found empty. Empower and encourage us all, men and women, youth and children, ordained and everyday folks to boldly proclaim the power of your resurrection to a hurting world. Lord, in your mercy. God of amazement, we give you thanks for the power of your love and your promises. Thank you for touching our hearts and opening us to your presence right here among us. We give thanks today for the ordination of Amy Mihalich Smith, for the turning of seasons, for those things which bring us joy and hope and moments of respite from life's challenges. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, continue to lead the ministry of faith by your spirit. Empower us as hearers of the gospel to share the good news care for our neighbor, and bless the world with your relentless love and mercy. We lift up our partners in ministry, the St. Paul Area Synod, our companions in Tanzania, Guatemala, and Kumamoto, Japan. For Community Helping Hand, 
the Washington County Homeless Services, St. Andrew's Resource Center, and our local schools. Lord, in your mercy. God of resurrection, hope. Bring the peace that surpasses understanding to all those who live in uncertainty and fear. We pray especially for those experiencing violence and famine in Ethiopia and Yemen. For those living in fear in Afghanistan, Israel, Palestine, Somalia, and across our own country due to increasing gun and gender violence. Make a way for peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we pray for those in need of healing of body, mind, and spirit. For Chuck Tolefsrud, Janet, Riley, Mike, Joyce Winnick, Jean Anderson, Charlene Jennings, Spencer Lindbergh, Steve Wells, Sam Matson, Artis Hansen, Ziva Joygard, Mike Novak's parents and his uncle Stan. For Pam and Doug Jeans, Everett Schultz and all who suffer from COVID-19 and its effects. For Britta Dumke, Katie Morgan, Barb Damgard, Evelyn Nelson, Gail Holton, Maya Morissette, Gina Good, Kate Seeger, Jenny, Dylan Marshall, and Judy Peterson. We also remember those we name silently in our hearts or out loud before you. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly One, we pray all this and that which is held in the quiet of our hearts, trusting in your mercy and care and the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in saying these words of blessing and raising your hands towards us. Somewhere in this room or at home, those around you or come right back to us through the, through the camera. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. And as we leave this space, we are invited to sing together, Rise, O Church. And this is a wonderful hymn that's actually been written by some of our um, fellow music ministers in Minneapolis. So enjoy singing along with us.
in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.